Iodine monochloride, ICL, can react with hydrogen to form iodine. This reaction was carried out several times using different concentrations of ICL or H2. The initial rate of each experiment was calculated and the results are shown below. Initial concentrations are shown for each experiment. Part A, Part 1. Calculate the rate constant K for this reaction. Include units in your answer and show all your working. The key in this question is that we're working out rate constant. For rate constant, the general rate equation we can use to work out the rate constant K because it's rate K and then concentration of your reactants raised to whatever the order of reaction with respect to the concentration of your reactants is. So if it was zero order, X would be zero or Y would be zero. If it was first order, x or y would be 1, and if it was second order, x or y would be 2. So using this, we can work out the rate equation for this reaction, and then we can work out K. So our reactants are ICL and H2, so our rate equation is going to be rate equals K ICL raised to the power of something, H2 raised to the power of something. So the way you work out the order of reaction with respect to the concentration of one of your reactants is where the other one remains constant or the concentration remains constant and then the other one is changing. So here we've got our H2 remaining constant and our ICL is increasing by a factor of 2 or it's doubling. And then you look at the rate and how this has affected it. And what's happened to the rate is it's increased by 2 as well, it's doubled. And that means it's going to be first order because it's the same change. If it was second order, it would be the rate is increasing by 2 squared or times 4. And if it was zero order, the rate would stay the same and it wouldn't matter how concentration changes because it would have no effect on the rate and that's what a zero order reaction is. So now we've worked out our order of reaction with respect to the concentration of ICL, we can now work out the order of reaction with respect to the concentration of H2. So we don't have an experiment where the concentration of ICL stays the same, but we do have the fact that we know that ICL is first order. So here in experiment two to three where we've divided by four, and we have divided H2 by 2, and the rate is then divided by 8. So we can use this information and the fact that ICL is first order to work out the order with respect to the concentration of H2. So the way that orders worked out, and if we looked at it a different way, in experiment 1 to 2, we've multiplied by 1. And then if you look at the times 2 and the times 1. If you do 2 times 1, that's going to be your timesing factor, which is 2 here. And then we've got a divide by 4 and a divide by 2. 4 times 2 is 8, so we're dividing by 8. And that's if it's first order, which it is, because this matches 4 times 2 is equal to 8. And that means our order with respect to the concentration of H2 is first order. So we could rewrite this as rate equals K concentration of ICL multiplied by the concentration of H2. And then using the data in experiment one, we can work out K because K will be equal to rate divided by the concentration of ICL multiplied by the concentration of H2. So, using experiment 1, k is equal to 2.04 times 10 to the negative 2 divided by 0 0.250 times 0 0.500. And that gives us a k value of 0.163, which we can then write on the answer line. Now, working out units, we have moles 
decimeters to the minus 3 seconds to the minus 1 as our rate units. And then we have moles squared decimeters to the minus 9 on the bottom. And that is our two concentrations because we've gone moles per decimeter cubed squared. And that gives us moles squared decimeters to the minus 9. So we can eliminate one of the moles and one of the decimeters cubed. And that's going to give us a unit of moles to the minus 1 decimeters cubed seconds to the minus 1. And this is how you answer the question. To get the four marks for this question, you get a mark for working out the orders of reaction with respect to the concentration of ICL and with respect to the concentration of H2, which are both first order. You get a mark for working out the rate equation. You get a mark for correctly working out K and a mark for correctly working out the units of K. Part two. Calculate the rate of reaction when ICL has a concentration of 3.00 times 10 to the negative 3 moles per decimeter cubed and H2 has a concentration of 2.00 times 10 to the negative 3 moles per decimeter cubed. Show all your working. We know from the previous question that the rate equation is rate equals 0.163 concentration of ICL multiplied by the concentration of H2 and our 0.163 that's our K value. So then we can plug in the concentrations of ICL which is 3 times 10 to the negative 3 moles per decimeter cubed and H2 which is 2 times 10 to the negative 3 moles per decimeter cubed and work out our rate. So that's going to be rate equals 0.163 multiplied by 3 times 10 to the negative 3 times 2 times 10 to the negative 3 and that equals 9.78 times 10 to the negative 7 moles per decimeter cubed seconds to the minus 1 which we can then write on the answer line provided. To get the mark for this question you must write 9.78 times 10 to the negative 7 on the answer line provided. Part B. Reaction rates can be increased or decreased by changing the temperature of the reaction. Figure 17.1 below shows the energy distribution of the reactant molecules at 25 degrees Celsius. Draw a second curve on figure 17.1 to represent the distribution of the same number of molecules at a higher temperature. Use your curve to explain how increasing the temperature increases the rate of reaction. So the new line for a higher temperature is going to be a lower peak and it's going to tail off earlier. And then we can show activation energy and shade in the fact that we've got more molecules because here I'm shading the number of molecules with an energy above the activation energy at 25 degrees Celsius but we can see at our higher temperature that we've got a lot more molecules with an energy higher than the activation energy which is what we can write about explaining how increasing the temperature increases the rate of reaction. So how we explain how increasing the temperature increases the rate of reaction is that the graph shows a higher temperature there's more molecules that have an energy above the activation energy. To get the two marks for this question, you must have the correct graph drawn. So you need to have something with a lower peak and then show that the activation energy on the graph and then write this statement below.